<laughs> uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. I don't mean, yeah, yeah. for either of you, actually, which is, is there a, are there films that you're particularly proud to have shown here, thinking that they wouldn't get shown elsewhere? Oh, dozens. Wow, I, 25 years, I couldn't think of all of them, but I, there's one that always jumps out in my brain, and it's a personal favorite, and it's Jesus of Montreal. It, it opened at, at, at TIFF, I saw it and went, wow, that, I think we'll do really well with that. I wanted that film. And so I went to the distributor and said, yeah, yeah, we've got to play it, we've got to play it. And luckily it was subtitled, so that there was no competition for other screens. And uh, we did, it did huge. It was one of our first hits. Which would have been a surprise for subtitled films. Yeah, very unusual. And it was one of those ones where the, the distributor was phoning me on Monday going, wow, I loved your numbers, that's great. You know, and it was kind of like, I don't know, uh, it was coming of age, not really like that, but it was like we, we arrived on the scene. We, we were recognized on the map of uh, How about Baghdad Cafe? a theater that could really do it. That was another fun one, yeah. See, Baghdad Cafe, so there's one that was in English. Uh, yeah. So it, it, it was a great film, and we, I think, had a fairly decent run with that film as well. Oh, yeah. And those were all in the, the same era, Jesus of Montreal, Baghdad Cafe, Sexualizing videotape. Um, it was the birth of indie cinema in that way, um, and we were there. It was very and that cool. Was, and those were films that we would show and nobody else would. I mean, but that would have been true of Jean de Florette. Remember that? Yes, I mean that was our first film yeah. that we opened on July fifteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. Jean de Florette. We'd gone through a severe uh, heat spell with the. You know, putting in the screen and all of that, and um, and when we opened, it was so hot. And there was Jean Ferret, and it's a film about trying to grow crops, and someone steals the water, and it's a drought. And so it was like a perfect opening film. Can you tell us a little bit about how we fixed? Do you remember we were showing <laughs> unbearable lightness of being? Oh my God! No! Oh yeah. Yeah. This, is, this was a, a, a classic bookstore, movie theater film. In analog, you would get um, any number of reels of film and you'd splice them together on a platter and they'd play through continuously through the projector. And as long as they're in order, you have the beginning, middle and end. But uh, with this one, we were all new and someone was putting it together and uh, mixed up a couple of the reels. So the film was playing out of order. And it was playing backwards. Oh, that's what it was. It was we backwards. Had, none of the reels was playing backwards. So what we ended up doing is stopping oh, the film. Yes, yeah, yeah. And there were three of us, or four of us, who actually had to manually spool the film up and turn the whole thing around and reconnect it. So, <laughs> so when you ask about the, comment, the, the difference between digital and uh, analog, there's, there's a big difference. You can't do that, that kind of stuff digital. doesn't. Yeah. Another example of that was uh, we showed um, Saturday Night Fever in a sort of retro rep kind of screening. And I wasn't, I, I, the film was together and I put it on screen and I was doing paperwork and not really watching. And then I hear this banging on the door of the projection booth and someone comes up and says, something's really wrong. Oh, what? what happened? <laughs> oh, this guy died five minutes ago and now he's come back to life. <laughs> and I don't remember that happening. And, and so I, I looked at it and went, oh my God, someone switched the reels. So a character who dies in reel five dies, but then it was out of order. So in reel three, there he was back on the screen. And people, no, this is wrong. This is terribly wrong. I think that was a series of, of uh, projectors that... Uh, Cineplex Odeon, or yeah. not projectors, but platters, uh, platters that, yeah. that those guys had, and when they ruled out a bunch of those things and their multiplexes, yeah. and we got, you know, we got some spare parts in the basement, but yeah. not enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's actually kind of nice that, that you know digital makes it easier in a lot of ways. And this, and well, well, you can't exist without digital now because these prints cost how much money? We showed uh, Delicatessen recently. Gorgeous film, old print, special processing when they did it. Uh, the prints, uh, when they first came out, were $8,000 a print. And they just don't exist anymore. So, uh, yeah, digital, the, one of the good sides of digital is it, it provides 
a lot more old stuff that you can get. And the film cans are a whole lot lighter. <laughs> <laughs>